Why would a doctor intentionally remove a piece of someone's skull? Yesterday, I presented the case of a 62-year-old male who came into the emergency department with left-sided weakness. His family found him after he awoke with these symptoms, and he was last seen normal the night before. A stroke code was called, and in the emergency department, this CT scan was done, and this was the findings. When we look at a CAT scan, we're looking at axial cuts, meaning they're taking sections across the brain like this. So this wider part right here is the skull. This gray stuff is the actual brain, and this black is the spinal fluid. Now what we're seeing on this patient's CAT scan is we can see lighter gray brain here, but all over here we see all this darker gray brain, and that is ischemic brain or brain that has died. This patient has suffered a stroke. Remember that our brain is highly vascularized, and there are many blood vessels that go to different parts of the brain. I mean, look at all these words. When we talk about stroke in different portions of the brain on the scan that I showed, these are the major distributions. You have the posterior cerebral artery, the middle cerebral artery, and the anterior cerebral artery, or to put it simply, the front, the middle, and the back. Now, I showed this picture in yesterday's video, and what I was pointing out is this is called the hyperdense MCA sign and is a classic finding. So essentially, this is a clot that's sitting right in the middle cerebral artery that's obstructing flow to his brain. So this is not a bleed or a hemorrhage. This is actually an ischemic stroke where there is a lack of blood flow to the brain. About 87% of strokes are actually ischemic. Why did that happen to him? He has something called atrial fibrillation, which is what I mentioned in yesterday's video, and that's where the heart has an abnormal rhythm. And with that abnormal rhythm, you can actually form clots within the heart. So if you have blood clots that form in your heart, it can actually break off and travel and get lodged in one of the blood vessels in the brain, causing a stroke. And depending on what blood vessel it gets lodged in, that portion of the brain will not have blood, and then you will have stroke-like symptoms. So a middle cerebral artery stroke, you will have weakness on one side of your body. So if you know your brain pathways, you can probably guess most types of strokes based on how the patient presents. It's all making sense now. Okay, okay, okay. He's having a stroke. Now what do we do? Here's the key factor is that this man was last seen normal nine hours ago or more. TPA is a medication that we can give for stroke patients, but they have to present within three to four hours of onset of symptoms. With TPA administration after acute stroke, you're almost twice as likely to have a favorable outcome. Now, if there is a large vessel occlusion, like in our patient where we actually saw the clot there, we can do a procedure called a thrombectomy where we can actually go in and suck out the clot. That typically has to be done within six hours of symptom onset, and some studies suggest approximately 70% improvement. Unfortunately, our patient was seen outside of that window, so there's not much we can offer him, and we can already see ischemic changes in the brain on the CT. So the brain is dead and there's not much more that we can do but wait. Wait for what? Here's the problem. The brain will swell after a stroke. And then there's this little thing in medicine that we call the Monroe Kelly Doctrine. The skull is in one space and there are three things that have to go in the skull. Brain, spinal fluid, and blood. So if the brain starts swelling, there's only a confined space that it can swell to. Now we could put in a drain and actually drain some spinal fluid. But this is a large vessel stroke, and there is a lot of dead brain in there. Within 12 hours of his presentation, here is a repeat scan of his brain. And what we're seeing is severe swelling of his brain that's causing midline shift, where his brain is actually pushing over onto the normal brain. In this time frame, he became obtundent and had to be intubated to protect his airway. If we don't do anything, he's going to die. So as a neurosurgeon, we can do a procedure called a decompressive hemicraniectomy where we remove a portion of the skull to allow that brain to swell outside of the skull. Kind of crazy, huh? But by doing that, we saved his life. Now the brain typically swells over one to two weeks and then it slowly goes back down over two to three months. Here's a picture from a medical journal showing a patient that has had a hemicraniectomy and after reconstruction. Now the dead brain will not heal, so the patient will live the rest of their life with that left-sided weakness. After an MCA stroke, it can certainly be a functional life, but he will remain paralyzed on that side of his body 
for the rest of his life. This patient actually had a stroke because of their atrial fibrillation and the eloquence, and it turns out that he was not compliant with his eloquence, or basically he was missing doses of his medication. Therefore, his blood was not thinning enough in order to prevent clots on his heart. That's why it's so important for patients to be compliant with their medications for stroke prevention. Every 40 seconds in the United States, someone has a stroke. Every three minutes and 14 seconds, someone dies of a stroke. And stroke is a leading cause of long-term disability. Please let this be your PSA for stroke awareness. And if you have any stroke-like symptoms, please present to the emergency department immediately. Acting fast is key to stroke survival. Droopy face, weak arm, or slurred speech, call 911 immediately. After intense rehab, our patient did undergo reconstruction of his skull. He does live with lifelong hemiplegia. This is another example of patient-focused and compassionate care. Stay tuned next week and I'll go through another case.